Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amora Love and today I'm going to be showing you this beautiful burgundy wig that I was sent by AffordHair.com. Let's get into the specs. So when I got my wig, it arrived in this beautiful box and it came with the wig and a few goodies. You get a pair of lashes. These are like 3D mink lashes and I got two hair clips to pin the hair out of the way and a wig cap that actually matches my skin tone. Love that. Y'all, it came with these adjustable straps that I actually really loved. It's kind of like a bra, and you get to adjust them without even having to sew on an elastic band yourself, which I really appreciated. So when I got the wig, it came in a net, and this is where you hook those bra strap elastic band hooks. It also comes with lace in the back and 13 by 4 lace in the front. Here's a quick overview, which I love because a lot of wigs that come pre-made don't have all the lace on the sides. And here are the adjustable straps in the inside. This actually ended up being my favorite way to wear the wig tacked down, but you do have a bunch of options to choose from. And now I'm just brushing through the wig to show you guys what it looked like when it first came. This is 180% density. It's a 99J wig with T1B roots, and it comes with the pre-plugged hairline. I love that. So here's a quick overview. So this is a 180% density wig. It's 99J burgundy with a 22 and a half wig size and it's 22 inches long with 13 by four lace. Yes, I love the fullness and the thickness through the ends. Oh, also y'all, this is Remy hair, meaning like it's not gonna tangle. First thing I did was tack the wig down to the mannequin head just so that all the hairs are out of my way when I bleach the knots. This is just gonna ensure that my application is really neat and that nothing moves or gets in the way while I'm applying the bleach. Next, I just use some powder lightener and some 30 or 40 volume with a mixing spatula to whip it up nice and smooth, getting all the clumps out. And then I just apply the lightener like cake frosting, making sure I covered all the knots. Now you guys, let me tell you something real quick because I basically wasted my time bleaching these knots. <laughs> I did not realize beforehand that the black roots are actually dyed black. So it's not a natural 1B, which means you guys don't need to waste your time bleaching the knots unless you really, really wanna try to bleach through the black dye. I personally wouldn't recommend it. So yeah, here I am wasting my time bleaching the knots, but I did wanna leave this in just so you guys can see how I bleach my knots. I even left this tack down upside down on the wig and the knots did not bleach at all. So once again, the black roots are dyed black. So I'm just shampooing, doing my purple shampoo method and all that. But I wanted to leave this in to show that I did wet the hair and guys, the color did not fade at all. Like it actually stayed, which is amazing. It barely faded, it barely bled in the sink. So your color will last a long time. This is the hair fully air dried. I just detangled it and I let it air dry alone. And this is actually pretty cute. It low key looks like you can finesse some loose waves out of this. So yes. Look at the fullness, the vibrance and the color, the health of the hair. Love that. The color is still just as vibrant. And look how much bundles they packed in there, you guys. That is where you're seeing your 180% density. Yes, we love a dense wig. So this is just me showing you guys that, yes, like I said, the knots did not bleach at all. And I left it on there upside down and I left it on there for a really long time and the knots are still black. So that's okay, just you know now. So don't waste your time, don't, don't buy product literally just try and finesse around that or you can just try to bleach through it but i just didn't want to go through that again so i hot combed and plucked one side and this is the other side that we need to pluck as you can see the hairline is very nice and thinned out for you however an inch behind the hairline there is a very harsh line and this is where you can go in and further customize the wig to give the density you would like to see now here I am with my Revlon tweezers, which I absolutely love. I rave about these things all the time. I got them at CVS and it has a really good grip on them, which are amazing. Here I am plucking at the base of the frontal. You wanna make sure you're grabbing the hairs from the bottom part, just so that you're not breaking off the hair. You're actually removing the hair from the lace so that the knot is not there. So I'm just combing through, checking my work, plucking it, making sure I'm not over plucking. And I'm making sure to keep out that front part of the hairline just so that we don't over pluck or end up with any ball patches. I'm just gonna continue working my way up all the way to the center part just to make sure that everything is nice and seamless and that there are no harsh lines because boo, 
Ain't nobody got harsh lines up in their natural head, so why would we want it in our wigs, right? Right. So this is just your time to further customize it and get the wig to how you want it to lay. You don't have to do this, but this is just something I like to do extra. Here I'm taking some Tresemme hairspray and I'm smoothing down my part and defining it with my hot comb. This is from Amazon. I'll be sure to leave all the links in the description for every single product and item you see in this video. However, this is mainly about the wig. So yes, get into this hairline. Doesn't it look way better without that harsh line like we love? So I'm just giving guys a quick overview, showing guys what we're working with before we start styling the wig. Much better, right? So, you guys already know the drill on my channel. If you don't, I definitely invite you to subscribe. So the drill is we always do U-part sections going in a diagonal back. And then I use my Tresemme hairspray. Yes, my Tresemme hairspray with my handy dandy Baby Bliss Pro flat iron. I'm using it on the highest setting doing the comb chase method. This is my holy grail secret trick to getting silky smooth hair with lots of body and lots of movement with a weightless flow to the hair. Trust me, you guys have to try this if you haven't tried it yet. Just hairspray, flat iron with the comb chase method. You'll love it, I promise. Especially if you're flat ironing textured hair, this is like the best trick. So I'm not gonna go through flat iron this whole wig. You guys already know what to do. So here's how it's looking all the way fully flat ironed, beautiful, luscious, flowy, vibrant burgundy hair. I love how deep this color looks. I love how even it all looks and how shiny and beautiful it looks. It has lots of body and lots of movement. This hair really straightens super well and the color just looks so good. I love color that's done correctly. So I'm using my Nairobi foaming mousse and I'm going to use that to tame the flyaways and lay the hairs back because guys, look at the difference when you do that. Yes. I mean, <laughs> sweetie, tell me that's not cute. I just, Nairobi foaming mousse literally just makes your life so much easier. It doesn't flake on you. It doesn't leave like weird residue. So if you guys are looking for a really good foaming mousse to mold your styles into place, I highly recommend the Nairobi foaming mousse. So right now I'm just carving out the hairline to pick out the hairs I want to use for my baby hairs. And I'm using a razor comb and just going down and cutting them off in a jagged motion so that I'm left with wispy hairs that are really short and natural looking along the front hairline. Then taking some more of my Nairobi foaming mousse, I am, bitch. Oh, I thought it wasn't recording. <laughs> Then taking some more of my Nairobi foaming mousse, I am molding the hairs into place and forming them how I want to, making sure it's all perfect, just how I like it. If you don't want baby hairs, you don't have to do that. The main reason I added baby hairs is for one, because I do it in my own natural hair, and for two, I don't know if you guys noticed, but this lace is really dark compared to me. So if you are of a darker complexion, this would be so perfect for you because I didn't get to pick the lace color when it was sent to me, so it does come in a medium brown lace you guys just so you know we'll talk about that more later but yes i need baby hair so that i can conceal the lace of the hairline because it doesn't match my skin tone here i'm just using some sanex strips these kinds are my favorite you got to get the black ones because they're a lot more thicker and stronger in my opinion so i use two and i tack down the hairline and tie it and just let it sit until it's dry once it's dry, I take it off and then I comb out that hard cast on the baby hair and the regular hair just so that it gives a softer appearance. We love a soft appearance. We don't want any hard, crusty, dusty baby hairs that look like they stuck in place. You want it to look natural and flowy. So you see this crease right here? We don't want that. So taking my handy dandy, trusty dusty, Baby Bliss Pro flat iron and some Tresemme hairspray to smooth everything out. I'm going to take out those creases using the comb chase method and just finalizing the style on the mannequin head before I apply the wig on myself. If you're not doing the comb chase method when you flat iron, girl, what is you doing? Make your life easier. Get you a carbon comb and do the comb chase method. I promise you, you will never return to your old ways of flat ironing hair. You guys, so this is me trying to put the wig on just to see how it fits, just to make sure everything is good. The cap size was perfect for me. And I just wanted to show you guys, I don't know if you know, but I am 5'9". I'm very tall and I have a long torso and a long neck and this hair 
still hit my waist in the back, which I really love. So if you're short, you don't really, really need more than 22 inches, in my opinion, unless you just like long, long hair. But yes, this hair was very true to length and I only tacked it down with adjustable straps inside and it was not going nowhere. So here you can see how dark the lace is, but let's get into installing it. So y'all, <laughs> I tried, um, I forget her name, Anne Marie, Marie Anne, but she said to use some freaking translucent powder and some hairspray to like fix dark lace. And I was having a hard time trying this. I, I don't know why I chose today to try this. I should have just went with my trusty foundation method, but the lace was so dark that I thought I would try something more dramatic. So I used translucent powder, like she said, but for me, I just, I don't know, it's just not for me. So <laughs> I ended up having to fix this and I was just having a hard time. I was trying to get this together. I was frustrated because I'm like, how am I gonna get this powder off? But then I thought, oh, let me use Nairobi Foaming Mousse. So it actually worked. <laughs> it took away the cast of the translucent powder, which I appreciate it. It just looked a little off. So I don't know y'all, I'm just trying to make it work. I don't, I don't know, I'm just, trying to see if I can finesse it in any way, shape or form, because like I said, this lace was really dark and I was still trying to make it work and we had to make it do what it do because I done signed a contract to get this video up. So I just kept it pushing. And at this point I was a little bit frustrated and I didn't know what to do. So I just did my little lazy old little way of applying. And I thought, okay, look, let me just do it the glueless method of applying the wig. So that way I'm not stuck with dark lace with powder and everything. So I took the Nairobi foaming mousse again. That's why I love this. Cause you can really go overboard with this and you won't even be able to tell. So I did the Nairobi foaming mousse and I swooped my baby hairs into place. And once I got my baby hairs into place, I'm mainly just hiding that lace line just so that it's not so obvious that the lace in my skin is a different color. And then I took the got to be glued, the newer version hairspray, and I sprayed it all over the perimeter of the front lace. Now this is just gonna help tack it down. And I used an elastic band. I got this from Slay by Jordan, or was it Erica J? Y'all. I forget who, but they're both amazing. So you should definitely go check them both out. I love this method. The elastic band is the goat. You guys gotta try it. They told us to try it and it's actually amazing. I have places to go and things to do and people to see. So I use my Baby Bliss Pro hood dryer to hurry up and speed up the drying process of the hairspray and the mousse, just because we got to go, okay? So once I took the elastic band off, I probably went OD with the hairspray. So I ended up having to comb out all that crust from the hairspray laying down the hairs on the lace, but it ended up combing out very nicely. It wasn't like too crusty. It didn't leave any like white residue when I combed out the flakiness of the hairspray. So I really liked that. Then I just went in with my hot comb, which I really love. If you guys don't have a hot comb, you really gotta get one. It definitely, definitely changes the game when it comes to wigs and laying them smooth and flat. There's just a flat iron can't do what a hot comb can do when it comes to lace. I'm just saying, you gotta try it. So once I got everything smooth and flat and combed out and softer, this is what I was basically working with and I wasn't too mad at it. Like given that the lace was really dark and given that I caked it up with translucent powder, it really didn't turn out that bad. So I just went in with some more <laughs> Nairobi foaming mousse. As you guys can see, I use this stuff a lot. But I'm just making sure all the flyaways are tamed down because we ain't trying to have no flyaways. And then I flat ironed that into my hair. Now you guys see how much heat I'm adding into this hair and the fact that the color did not change. The color did barely bled in the sink, which is so cool for this to be in the red hair color family. Like, I don't know if you guys know, but when you dye wigs with a color stain with like a door or kiss, or even Arctic Fox, whenever you add heat to the hair, it definitely changes the color. And what I love about this is it did not change the color at all. It stayed. So I feel like this burgundy will last you guys a long time if you decide to get this wig. So here's the hair all straight. If you wanted to give it a trim, I would suggest giving it a trim right about here. 
but yes it's so cute it's so silky this is the finished look i hope you guys really enjoyed this look i hope you guys are enjoying the content i'm producing on my channel this is going to be the start of another seven day video streak so if you are not subscribed i invite you to subscribe now because i will be posting every day for the next seven days and i will be giving you all types of content boo so i hope you're ready get your post notifications turned on it's the bell right next to the subscribe button i hope you all have a wonderful day i hope you all enjoyed this video and i hope you all get this wig go shop on affordhair.com they do have 45 days easy return if you have a problem with your order they will have easy returns for you and yes you guys i hope you have a wonderful day and i will see you guys in the next video bye